hope that everybody's having a good night tonight. And we're so good, very glad that you could join in on the prayer call for the Hour of Power broadcast that we bring forth every Tuesday night. We thank God for you. We thank God for your families that has been listening. I hope that you've been being blessed by this ministry here at Flowing Rivers Ministries. And I am certainly glad to be your host tonight, Elder Jamar Phil, y'all. We have a wonderful message for you tonight and a power packed prayer. And so I hope that everybody has had a great Thanksgiving. And I know that everybody's in the shopping mode and getting ready for the holidays. I know we're certainly excited about it ourselves and hope that everybody will have a safe, safe, safe holiday this particular Christmas season here at the end of 2021. Thank God we're here on the last day of November for this message tonight. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the power of conviction, the power of conviction. And so remember that you can always tune into our broadcast outside of the Tuesday night hour of power broadcast. If you'll go to YouTube, of course, you can go to YouTube, type in Flowing Rivers Ministries or Pastor Jamar Phil, y'all, you'll be able to find our videos there. Certainly feel free to subscribe to our channel. Click that like button and click that bell button for the uh, subscribe subscription button. Subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. Share our videos so that they can be blessed and enriched by the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many of you know that this gospel is life-changing? It is life-changing, fire-bringing, and able to revolutionize your life forever. So tonight, let's go ahead, let's get right into the word. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the power of conviction leads to repentance. The power of conviction, conviction leads to repentance. And our scripture tonight is going to be coming from the book of Acts chapter 2. The book of Acts chapter 2, and we're going to begin at verse 32. The book of Acts chapter 2, and we're going to begin at verse 32. Of course, you know, the last few weeks I've been reading from the New Century Version. I'm going to read from there again tonight. Of course, you can feel free to follow along in the versions that you have. I'm going to try to make sure we stay along on the same basis and understand the pretty, you know, the, the main points of the scripture as we go through them tonight. So Acts chapter 2, verse 32, and I'm reading from the New Century Version, and the su subject tonight is the power of conviction leads to repentance. We're going to talk about conviction tonight, conviction. So Acts 2, verse 32 says like this, Paul is preaching, or Peter rather, Peter is preaching to the, to the people there in Jerusalem after that the Holy Ghost has fell on the people in the upper room, the group of 120 people. They're speaking in tongues and they are having a Holy Ghost experience. And so Peter is explaining a little bit more of what's going on in this particular scripture we're reading tonight. So Acts 2 verse 32. It says, so Jesus is the one whom God raised from the dead. And we are all witnesses to this. Jesus was lifted up to heaven and is now at God's right side. The father has given the Holy Spirit to Jesus as he promised. So Jesus has poured out that spirit and this is what you now see and hear. And it's, it's, it's awesome how that works. The Father sends Jesus, and Jesus from the Father sends the Holy Spirit. They're all God. They're God. They're, they're, they're all God. But I love the function, the way that God has it functioning, that you have the Father who sends Jesus, and Jesus who sends the Holy Spirit. And then as we go in reverse, we have the Holy Spirit who leads us to praise Jesus and Jesus leads us to have fellowship with the Father. So they work so perfectly and so cohesively as 
one God. I love that. And so verse 34 says, as Peter explains it more, David was not the one who was lifted to heaven, but he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right side until I put your enemies under your control. Verse 36, so all the people of Israel should know this truly, God has made Jesus, the man you nailed to the cross, both Lord and Christ. But verse 37 here is something that I want us to really pay a close attention to. When Peter is preaching this message, verse 37 says it like this. When the people heard this, they felt guilty. When they heard pre Peter preaching, they heard what had happened. They're hearing the truth. They're seeing the experience of the Holy Spirit operating in its fruition. They felt guilty. And once they felt guilty, they asked Peter and the other apostles, what shall we do? See, it's just not enough for me to feel this feeling of guilt from the problem that I created or the problem that I participated in. But there has to be something that happens after this feeling. So they asked the apostles and Peter, what shall we do? Verse 38 says it like this. Peter said to them, change your hearts. Or in the King James Version, he says, repent. So the Bible says here, change your hearts and lives and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin. See, after I feel this feeling of what I've done wrong, then I must move to repentance in order for me to receive forgiveness. And the Bible says, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39 says, this is a promise for you, your children, and for all who are far away, it is for everyone. I'm talking everybody. I don't care what situation you're in. The Holy Spirit is for you if you will repent and change your mind about the sin that you're committing and, this, and the sin that you're living in or the error that you're living in. If you will repent and change your mind, the Holy Spirit is for everyone the Lord our God calls to himself. So let's talk a little bit about this word conviction. I'm sure everybody, if you've been in the church, you've heard this word many times. Uh, the English definition of the word conviction means that you have been found guilty of a crime by a court. You've gone to court and you've been what's called convicted or found guilty of that crime. Or you have agreed to just pretty much plead guilty, but pretty much you are guilty of whatever crime you have committed. Therefore, you have been convicted of that crime. Think about that. But biblically, it's kind of along the same scenario, but it's uh, one who has been convicted is actually been convinced of the crime, or is what we call the crime, sin. You have been convinced or persuaded or compelled that the sin you committed has made you guilty in the sight of God. You have been guilty, proven guilty of that sin. And in its simplest meaning, a conviction is something about which we are convinced. And of course, like I said, the word convinced means you believe it firmly. You're compelled. You're, you're persuaded. You, you, you believe in the error that you have committed, that what you've done is an error and a sin. And it's important to say that because we live in a time where it's a lot of gray area when it comes to sin. Used to, when I grew up, and I know I'm not as old as some of the rest of you, you guys, but, but in my 40s, but when we grew up, it was sin was more black and white, and it was more uh, uh, preached on 
than it is today. And so when you found out what sin was and you found yourself committing that sin, if you were really saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, you felt guilty. You felt this conviction. You felt this, uh, uh, this, this, this feeling that I have not been found in right standing with God. I've been convinced of my sin that I should not be doing this. And this can only happen when the word of God, of course, is preached accurately and contextually so that we understand right from wrong, holiness from unholiness, good from evil, light from darkness. And we got to understand what God loves and what he hates. Like I said, those of us chosen by God have a desire to do what is right. I'm going to say that again. Save people. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I got to preach this hard. Save people have a desire to do what is right. I'm going to say that again. Not to be redundant, but we have to say that again. Save people have a desire to do what is right. If I've been saved, if I've given my life to Jesus Christ and have been filled with his Holy Spirit, my desire is to do what is right. And if I find myself in a sinful place or a place of error or a place outside of the will of God, I am not able to rest contently. I'm not able to rest. I'm not able to rest. Conviction will have to take place as the Holy Spirit gives that to me within my life. He gives me conviction. He convicts me. He does it in a loving way. He's not doing it in an accusing way, but he's doing it in a loving way because we know that God doesn't want to accuse us. God wants to love us. He is a lover. But the only way that we'll get that red flag or that red alert that we're in sin is we have got to understand the word and the Holy Spirit when we find ourselves outside of the word of God or in error against the word of God, the Holy Spirit will give us this feeling of conviction. He will convict us. And sometimes people will override that conviction. We're living in a time where people can do all sorts of sin. And I don't want to get the name of sins because I'll be here all night <laughs> to be naming particular kinds of sins. But people can live in sin and override the conviction. Because remember, the Holy Spirit is not going to restrain you. He's not going to put handcuffs on you. He's not going to put a ball and chain on you. He's not going to lock you up in a jail and close the bars so you can't get out and go sin. No, you have a free range to go sin. But if you are wanting to do right by God, then he will convict you. He will constrain you. There, there, there used to be a song that said something on the inside is working on the outside. And even when I do make mistakes or even when I do make bad decisions, I cannot rest contently because the Holy Ghost convicts me. Lord have mercy. There's something in me that said, that's not right. You need to go apologize. I love the way Jesus says it, even when, when you're going to pray. He says, when you're going to pray, he says, if you feel or did you know that you got an ought against your brother, go stop your prayer, stop whatever you're doing, stop with your gifts and go and get that thing right. Jesus does not want us overriding sin and conviction. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me here. He doesn't want us overriding conviction. He doesn't want us overriding that feeling that's in us that we know we have done wrong. We know we have sinned. We know we have, have not got everything right. Or as they say, dotted every I or crossed every T. So when this comes to you, we have to bring it before God and we have to confess it and repent. But you have to first start with conviction. Conviction. Many are fighting those convictions. 
those of us who have been saved for a long period of time still fight conviction. It doesn't mean because you've been saved for a lengthy period of time that you don't fight conviction. That flesh is fighting and you're fighting and wanting to yield to the flesh sometime, but the Holy Spirit wants to make you more like Jesus who was perfect. Therefore, he wants to convict us so it will lead to repentance. Doesn't matter how long you've been saved. I love the way Hebrews 5 and 12 says, uh, Paul is, uh, or the writer rather, is talking to people who've been saved for a lengthy period of time. And he says here in uh, Hebrews 5, he says, by now you should be teachers, but you need someone to teach you again the first lessons of God's message. You still need teaching that is like milk. You are not ready for solid food. He says, anyone who lives on milk is still a baby and knows nothing about right teaching. Verse 14, but solid food is for those who are grown up. They are mature enough to know the difference between good and evil. Paul, or the writer here is saying, you've got to know the basics. You should be further along now, but there is a spirit. I want to talk prophetically tonight. I want to move away from notes a little bit because there's a spirit that's in the land that is making even people who have been in church a long time feel okay with overriding convictions. That feeling, you know it's wrong. You know that's wrong. You know that you should be further along now. You know you should be beyond, be beyond the basics now, not away from the basics, but beyond the basics, but you're still struggling with the basics. And the problem is now you've been struggling with the basics for so long that you're starting to lose that conviction. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, yes, Lord. See, see, that I'm, I'm going to talk about four basics here. There's four basics I want to talk about that Hebrews talks in uh, Hebrews 6 following that uh, fifth chapter. One of the basics the writer says is the importance of repenting from sin. I don't care how old you get, there is an importance of repenting from sin. That's the basic. We shouldn't have to be continually telling saints of God to repent from sin, to turn away, to change your mind, to change your way of thinking about the sin. No, I don't want to re, uh, uh, participate in the sin. I want to go the opposite way of the sin. This is important. This is a basic component of the gospel. I must go away from those sinful things. But many don't want to repent because they are wanting to override conviction. The foolishness of trying to be saved by good deeds. No, I'm not trying to be saved by good deeds, but I'm not trying to live a life full of bad deeds either. Because one thing that the Holy Ghost does is when he convicts us, what he is wanting to do is for us to be led by him. And when we are led by the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus sent, because he was going away to sit at the right hand of God, the Holy Spirit wants to lead us, and every day we should be more like Jesus. Your lifestyle should resemble Jesus Christ. People around you should be looking at you saying, you know what? He or she is one of those Jesus people. You know, I'm reminded whenever you have children, uh, uh, people are always they'll look at your children to try to see if your children resembles the mother or the father, especially the father. <laughs> They're trying to see if that child resembles the father. And if you look at that child close enough, that child will have a dimple like the father or a, a nose like the father or eyes like the father or ears like the father. 
there's something on that child that will resemble that father because if there's nothing on that child that resembles that father, people are going to question whether that child belongs to that man. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me here. Glory to God. Something about you should be looking like Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is leading us to become more like Jesus Christ. Therefore, every day, he is wanting to get more of these sinful qualities out of your life. So you can't live in sin and feel good about it. Because once the word of God is preached and the sin comes up, because, because oh yes, the Lord preaches, he talks about sin. When sin comes up to the surface, the Holy Spirit will convict you of that sin. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You can't be shacking up and living in homosexual marriages and lying and stealing and committing all types of sin and the Holy Spirit not convict you. You can't live comfortably in that situation. He wants to convict you. He wants to convict you. He loves you. And he wants you he to become you. more like Jesus every day. We should be beyond the basics. But now people are not even seeing the basics. The saints of God want to blend or give this gray area of Christianity, mm -hmm. and they want to 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 uh, 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 make their own doctrines and their own thoughts. And we're living in a time now where you know people will tell you, "I don't see it like the Bible says." Or I heard one man tell me, he said, well, that was Paul saying that. What did Jesus say? See, see, people are all in left field when it comes to the word because they are overriding conviction. The scripture is 100% inspired by the Holy Spirit. Every man in this oh, yeah. scripture where, where this Bible is written, the Bible is written under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's 100% true. And oh, anybody, yes, Paul says, anybody that's coming to preach another gospel, then that which we have preached to you, let that person be a curse, whether it's a human oh, or yes. an angel. You got to be led by the Spirit and allow the Spirit to convict you. Yay. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. We can't continue to override conviction and live in allowed sin. I love what Timothy says. Uh, I think it's in uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 5. Uh, Paul says to Timothy, he says, they're having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The New Living Translation says it like this. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. <laughs> Glory to God. He says they will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. That's where we're at. They're rejecting the power that would make them godly. The Holy Spirit wants to make you godly. He wants to make us walk and talk just like Jesus. First Timothy 4 and 1 says, Now the Holy Spirit clearly says that in later times, some people will stop believing the faith. And they will follow spirits that lie and teachings of demons. Such teachings come from false words of liars whose consciences are destroyed as if by a hot iron. They have lost conscience. They have lost conviction. We have preachers today that want to make money so bad and they won't to build what they call kingdom edifices so bad that they're willing to be in the grave. 
They don't want to preach against sin anymore. They don't want to talk about uh, uh, what is right and what is wrong, what is holy and what is unholy, what is righteous and what is unrighteous. But they want to get the masses of the people. But what good is it to get the masses of the people if you're not going to preach to them the truth that can make them free? Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, Lord. See, people who stand for righteousness, they're not going to have many friends. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Lord, have mercy. People who are preaching righteousness and truth are not going to have many friends because, because when you begin to preach righteousness and truth, you're going to preach against something that your friend is in. Oh, Lord. All right. All right. And when you preach against something that your friend is in, if he or she is not convicted and willing to repent, the opposite reaction is going to be get mad with you and get out of your way. That's why most prophets, they found themselves alone because they preach truth. God downloads truth. He downloads a message of truth and truth makes you free. But yes. as, as Paul is telling Timothy, Paul is telling Timothy, you got many that are going to deny the power to make them free. Oh, yeah. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, you see, this is the power of, of, of truth. When, when the word comes and, 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 and the people get the truth, then the Holy Spirit will do the rest. Yes, he will. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because when truth comes forth, the Holy Spirit will begin to convict. Yes, it, yes. Hey, glory yes. to God. When Peter began to uh -huh. preach here in Acts chapter two, the, the spirit began to convict the people. Yes, Lord. To the place that they felt guilty about what they did. Hallelujah. And they asked Peter, then what shall we do? I want to change. Mm -hmm. I want to be different. I want to be holy. I want to be ready when Jesus Christ comes back. Tell me, what can I do? Peter, James, John, apostles, somebody tell me, what can I do? Because I don't like this oh, feeling God. of conviction. Hey, glory to God. Woo, oh, hallelujah. No. I don't like this feeling of conviction. Tell me, what can I do? We've got to learn that God wants us to be just like him. And we as human beings did not make up the ways of life that God wants us to live. This is God's way. He is in charge. I didn't make the rules. Matter of fact, there's some things that if we would all be truthful, our flesh desires to do. Our flesh doesn't want to live under the constraints of the Holy Spirit. But my spirit and my soul has made up his mind that for God I live and for God I die. And there's something on the inside that's constraining me. One of the old bishops used to sing a song back way back in the day. He says something on the inside is withholding the rain talking about the reins that they put on the animal. Whenever you would tell that horse to hold and pull those reins, he would stop. It would keep him from going mm -hmm. further. Well, there's something on the inside that's doing me the same way. Whenever you have a desire oh, to God. live righteously, the Holy Ghost is on the way. It doesn't matter if my mother's watching me. It doesn't matter if my bishop's watching me. It doesn't matter if, if my brother is watching me. It doesn't matter if my wife is watching me. She doesn't have to keep a low jack on me or, 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 or follow me or, or, or put some type of device on my car to find out where I'm going. No, there's something on the inside. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's constraining me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will help you. The, the old folk used to tell me, they used to say, you can be kept if you want to be kept. 
Oh, yes. But you got to want to be kept and you got to be finished with sin. I don't care who's saying that you can sin and that you can live a half saved life. That is not the life that God wants for his people. God wants a yes. holy life. He wants a life of holiness for his people. There's got to be a difference between lightness and darkness. Glory to God. I love what the Apostle Paul says in Acts 24, verses 15 and 16 in the King James Version. He says, he says, and I have, I have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. And herein I do exercise myself to always have a conscious void to offense toward God and toward man. Let, let, let's read that in the Message Bible. I want to read that in the Message Bible so you can get some clarity of what he's saying there. That's Acts 24, 15 and 16. Let's read that in the Message Bible. He says, and I admit to living in hopeful anticipation that God will raise the dead both the good and the bad. If that's mm -hmm. my crime, my accusers are just as guilty as I am. Watch this. He says, believe me, I do my level best to keep a clear conscience before God and my neighbors in everything I do. Yes. Hey, glory to God. Paul is saying here, I'm not living a life that is, is, is smothered in sin. He said, but I'm doing my best to live a sin-free life. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm doing my very best. Oh, yes, Lord. I'm putting every effort, every inch of my being into living a sin-free life. Glory to God. And if I come up short, if I come up short, the Holy Spirit is going to convict me. And that conviction will lead to me repenting because I do yes. not want sin existing in my life toward God or toward man. Oh, yes. right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. John chapter 16, verse 7 through 11. In the New King James Version, he says like this, John chapter 16, verse 7 through 11. He says, nevertheless, Jesus is saying here, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, when the Holy Ghost comes, he convicts. Somebody ought to say that. Oh, yes, Lord. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will convict. Oh, God. He will convict the world of sin. Yes. He's doing it to lead us to repentance. Well, glory to God. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse eight through 11. New Living Translation says like this, the Apostle Paul, he has written a letter. He says, I'm not sorry that I sent that severe letter to you, though I was sorry at first, for I know it was painful to you for a little while. Now I'm glad I sent it, not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change you your ways. He said, it was the kind of sorrow God wants his people to have. So you were not harmed by us in any way. Verse 10, pay attention to verse 10. He says, for the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin 
and results in salvation. Hey, glory to God. I'm going to say that again, verse 10. Verse 10 says, for the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. He says, there is no regret for that kind of sorrow. He says, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. Yes. Verse 11. Yes. Verse 11. He says, just see what this godly sorrow produced in you. It produced earnestness, concern to clear yourself. It produced indignation. It produced an alarm system to sin in you. It produced a longing to see the apostle. It produced a zeal to live holy. It produced such a readiness to punish wrongdoing. You show that you have done everything necessary to make things right. I want to stop right there yeah. because, because what, what happens with saved folk, with us, is when we get the Holy Spirit, when we do something wrong, we should feel sorry about it. Hey, my, mm -hmm. my, my, my God. We should feel such a conviction that that feeling is uneasy and almost unbearing. But Paul said, even though it's painful and it hurts so bad, he says, it's not for you to make you worse, but God has done it in you so that you will become righteous, so that you will clear yourself of sinful deeds. Hey, my, 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 my God, my God. What is that difference there between, what is that difference between worldly sorrow and conviction of the Holy Spirit? Well, worldly sorrow is like this. People in prison are sometimes sorry for what they did, but the only reason that they are sorry is because they got caught. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're not sorry for what they did, but the most of the reason that they're sorry is because they, because they got caught. That is not yes, conviction. Yes. Conviction is sorry for the sin. I'm sorry that I've committed a sin against God and against man. And whatever the word of God says is sin, then that is what is sin. And this conviction that we feel the Apostle Paul says, has made you better because now we can get to repentance. I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. This word repent in the Greek is metaneo, metaneo. And it involves a turning with contrition or remorse from sin to God. Like I said, it hurts. I'm sad. When you sin, you should feel bad. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me here. I know this sounds different. This may sound different from what is popular in church now because everybody is overriding it. No, when I sin, I should feel terrible. Yes, Lord. Yes. I shouldn't be around here saying, oh, I sin, I repent. I'm gonna go on and do it again later and I repent again. And when I do it again, I repent again. And you just keep overriding that feeling of conviction. No, if I know I've done you wrong, I feel terrible. Hey, glory to God. God. And Jesus said, you can't keep on having church until you go get that thing straight. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, yes. glory to God. I'll holler to the mountain. Glory to God. I love this message. Hallelujah. Because I feel a breakthrough on the line. I feel a breakthrough on the inside. When you begin to do what God tell you to do and preach it how God say preach it, you'll begin to feel things begin to break. Glory to God. You cannot God. continue to have church living in willful sin. Yeah. There's something on the inside that should be convicting you. Hey, and when you're convicted, you should feel bad. And when you feel bad, it leads you to repentance. Yes, Lord. And it feels so bad that when you repent, you say, I don't want to do that no more. Right now. I don't want to live that life anymore. I think different 
about that life. Mm -hmm. Write this down. Write this down. Two things that must happen when you repent. Two things that must happen when you repent is you must turn from that evil and you must turn to God to do good. I'm going to say it. I know, I know folk want to live in sin, but no, we coming up out of here. You've got to turn from evil. You've got to turn from drunkenness. You've got to turn from malice and wild parties and wrath and rage and witchcraft. We got saints of God that want to burn sage in their house. Let that witchcraft go. Let the horoscope go. Let all of this sin stuff go and repent and turn to God. Glory to God. You've got to quit shacking. You've got to quit homosexuality. You've got to quit lying. You've got to quit stealing. You've got to quit being disobedient. You've got to quit. You've got to stop. You've got to take it out. And if you don't take it out, you're going to find yourself in a place that's outside of the will of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You put yourself, sin puts you in danger. Glory to God. Sin puts you in danger of eternal death. The Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, haven't I told you that if you continue to do these things, that you will not inherit the kingdom of God? Didn't I tell you that if you continue to do these things, go to Galatians 5, he'll give you the list. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he'll give you the list. Go to Romans chapter 1, he'll give you the list. Glory to God. And the many other places in the Bible where God is saying, come out from among them and be ye separated, saith the Lord. <laughs> There's many places in the Bible where he's calling for the people of God to repent. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says, now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. <laughs> then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. See, once you repent, then you can start to receive. Hey, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. We should be further along than this. We should be prophesying the deep messages of God at this time. We should be walking in miracle signs and wonders. But the apostle Paul says, repent. Peter says, repent. So that your sins may be wiped out. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. And he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. Acts chapter 20 and 21 says it like this. And I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike. The necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God. The apostle says, I've had one message. Hey, my God, my God. I've had one message for Jews and Greeks alike. The necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God. And of having faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 2 and 4 says, Or do you despise, do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering? not knowing that goodness, the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 31 and 19 says, after I strayed, oh yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. After I strayed, I repented. Mm -hmm. After I came to understand, I beat my breast I was ashamed and humiliated because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Luke chapter 17, verse three through four 
says like this, Luke 17, three through four, he says, watch yourselves. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times in a day, each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you must forgive. Mm -hmm. God is saying, I'm willing to forgive you if you will repent. And repent is not just wordplay. It is an action. Let me say that again. Repentance is not just a word you use. It is an action that you perform. You turn and you stop doing that evil or you're just living in sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 and 13 through 14 says like this. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, who oh, yeah. he promised long ago. He says the Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Saints of God, I thank God tonight because conviction, when the Holy Spirit convicts us, when we're convinced that what we did was wrong, or some of us in some cases, what we're doing is wrong, then we should be sorrowful. We should be yeah. sad. If I treat you wrong, I should be sad about it. I should be hurt about it. And that drives me to repentance. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For it is only through repentance that I can get to salvation. I don't care if it makes me unpopular. If I'm not popular with friends, if I'm not popular in the neighborhood, if I'm not popular on the job, I'm willing to be unpopular and live according to the word of God. Yeah, can I, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight because God did not call us to be popular. He called us to be led by the Spirit. Yes, Lord. He called us to be what he has created us to be from the foundation of the world. For Glory God God. has mighty plans for his people that goes yes. far beyond our imagination. Hallelujah. Now that Hallelujah. Jesus has restored us back in right standing with God through his blood My that God, was shed God. on the cross, we have been given the opportunity to live a life that goes far beyond our wildest dreams. Glory to God. My Satan God. desires to keep us in the muck and miry and mud of sin. He desires mm -hmm. to keep us in a place where we'll override the conviction and keep us in a place where we're not living the life that God has purposed for us to live. But I come oh, tonight God. to sound the alarm against sin. I come to yes. preach against everything that God is against. Yes. Glory to God. And I come to preach everything for what God is for. For I stand yes, for Jesus Christ with no apologies. I stand for the word of God. Hallelujah. Even if it costs me friends, if it costs me brothers, I've got to stand because I've got to be what God has created me to be. God has created yes, me to be above and, and not beneath. He's created me to be the head and not the tail. 
He's created me to be his follower and to be his child and to be his mouthpiece in a time where people are not crying against sin. But I hear the Lord saying tonight, it's time to cry against sin. Glory to God. Because God has given us the Holy Ghost to convict us of sin and to give us the power to make us like Jesus Christ. Is yes. there anybody on the line tonight that needs deliverance? Somebody need to be delivered tonight. There's been some sin that you've been holding on to that you have not been willing to let go of. And you know that the Holy Ghost is telling you to put that sin down. You know that the Holy oh. Ghost is telling you to let go of those sinful deeds. You know the Holy Ghost is telling you to go and apologize. You know the Holy Ghost oh. is telling you to do right and to love and to make peace and to have faith and to have joy. Oh, yes, Lord. Glory to God. And he's calling oh, us God. out of sin into the marvelous light. I hear the Lord tonight say, shine down, turn the light on darkness and begin to shine the light on darkness so the people can come out. He says, come out, come out, come out and be convicted and repent and get the salvation that I have called you to have. Sister Tate, are you on yes. the line to help me tonight? Glory to God. Yes, Lord, I'm I'm on the line. Line. Glory to God. Sister Glory Tate, God. I want to pray for the power of conviction to break out amongst the people of God. In Jesus' name, Glory let the Lord God. use you. It's in your hand. God bless you. We thank you, oh God, for this Glory opportunity God. that God. we have tonight to come in your presence, oh God. God. Glory, Glory God. God, ask me, oh God, to let conviction break out yes, in Lord. the hearts and the minds of your people. Hallelujah. Glory yes. God, you Glory send God. your word, hallelujah. Glory to God, you came, oh God, hallelujah. Yes, Thank you, Jesus, Lord, God, oh, God, oh, Lord, yes, Lord. that yes, we Lord. might have life. And yes, that we Lord. might have life more abundantly. Holy. Glory to God, you said the word for God so loved the world. Holy. That he gave his only begotten son that we never believed in him. Shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, Lord, uh, and in order for us to get that everlasting life, we got to come under conviction, oh God, yes, hallelujah. And the people said, oh God, on the day of Pentecost, what God. must I do to be saved? Yes, and Peter Lord. let them know, repent, hallelujah, Amen. be baptized, every one of you, in the name yes, of Jesus Christ, Jesus. by remission of sins, and ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we are crying out tonight, oh God, that you would touch the hearts and the minds of your people, that yes, they will, will be convicted of their sins, hey, and hey, God, my and God, my you will be saved. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, oh God. We are yes, crying out tonight, and we are so glad that you have your servants. And as a mock cried out oh, against Jesus. sin, oh, oh God, we thank you because you said in your word, let not sin reign in your mother body. Let come to the box, see, let come to that you must. may obey it. Oh, my God, but you want us to repent and get everything, hallelujah, right with you. Hallelujah. The enemy come to kill and to steal and destroy, but you can hey. that we might have life on the box. That had them all burning, oh God. You suffered and died on the cross, oh God. For our sins, oh God. That we won't live in sin, oh God, but we'll live for you. Glory to God, and we want to live for you. We want to run for you. We want to work for you. We cry out for the people of God tonight. Glory to God, that no sin will reign in our mortal bodies that we live in the lost world. Help us, oh God. Hallelujah. Renounce the hidden things of darkness and come on to you and be saved yes, and Holy Ghost feel. Hallelujah. Not live as the things of the world, but to live for you. Glory to God. Hey, There's anybody on the line God, tonight that either got trapped and wrapped and tied up. Oh yes, God, Lord. we pray that you will loose them. Glory to God. We command you, Satan, and hallelujah, to be bound and loose the people let them go free. Glory to God. Loose them, Lord. Don't give them that desire, hey, that appetite for sin, but give them an appetite and a desire for you. Glory to God, because you said in the word, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes, Take my Lord. yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest in the soul. 
Lord, my yoke is easy. Yeah, my brother's light. Oh, God, we pray, oh, God, that you will help your people tonight. Let them be convicted of the sin, oh, God, that yes, the enemy Lord. has chopped them in. Loose them and let them go. Loose them, oh, God, and let them go free Hallelujah. for you. To live for you, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, sir. And these vessels for your use, uh, that you can use them and get the glory out of their lives. Oh, God, we pray. Uh, we're waiting on your God to do a new thing. Uh, we're waiting on you, oh, God, to work miracles within our lives. Uh, oh, yes, that we'll lift God. up a stand of holiness for you, Lord. Uh, that we'll repent of anything we've done, said, thought, or felt that didn't please you. Uh, and we'll run for you, oh, God. Uh, we know your blood hey. is powerful enough, oh, oh God, to keep us. Your blood is powerful enough, oh God, hallelujah, to touch our hearts and touch our minds that yes. we'll do the right thing. Glory to yes. help us, oh God, tonight. Yes. Let us lift up a stand of holiness in the earth for yes, you, Lord. that the world might see Jesus in our lives uh, and come to you and be saved. Yes, help Jesus. those, oh God, that are weak in their flesh and weak in their minds. Uh, and yes. oh God, let them, oh God, lead to you. Uh, because we can't do it on our own. And since we can't do it, we, we sit in the Holy Ghost to live in us, oh God. Yes, because Lord, you Jesus. said the word. But after that, the Holy Ghost has come. You shall have power. And yes, the Holy Ghost Lord. has come to lead us and guide us in all truth. And we want to be oh, led Lord. by you, oh God. You let us know that they are, that are led by the Spirit of God, yes, are the Lord, sons Jesus. of God. And you said your word, now you are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. Hallelujah. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Hallelujah. And we shall see him as he is. And every man that has his hope in him, he will find himself even as he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us renounce the hidden things of darkness. Oh God, Hallelujah. and be convicted with our hearts. And not let no sin run in our mouth. Hallelujah. Come in our hearts, oh God, no more. Touch hearts and minds tonight. Look on the sinners everywhere, the bad flowers everywhere. Yeah, Lord, hallelujah. Lord. Come in. Oh, yes, Lord. We'll give you glory. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let the Lord use you, Sister Tate. Let him use you. Hallelujah. Let him use you. The Lord is on our side. He's on our side. He wants us to be hot. Be holy. He said, be ye holy. As I am holy. And the only way we can be holy is to do it the way he did it. The way the word said it. We got the word to guide us and to instruct us what to do and how to do. And let us find every weight that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us in due hallelujah. 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 a good soldier and fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Thank you. Hey, hey, man. Come on, God. God. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God we serve. Yeah, but I know who Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Second Timothy, verse 3 and 16 says it like this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished. Glory to God. Unto all good works. The scripture, the word of God, is given to us and it corrects us. Yes, yes, yes. It reproves us. 
It gives us good doctrine. Yes, it does. Glory and to it God. It instructs us in righteousness. Hallelujah. Haya. Glory to God. Anybody on the line tonight, glory to God. Hallelujah. That is struggling with sin. Sister Tate prayed the prayer tonight, and I believe that a yoke came off your neck. I believe that the yoke is destroyed because she prayed with such a fire of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Come hey, to God. I say tonight, come out, come out of sin, come out while you have a chance. Come out while you can breathe. Come out. to God. This is your time. This is your time to live the best life that God has intended on you living. You don't have to live a second class life or a gutter class life. You can live a life that God has furnished. <laughs> furnished with the righteousness and the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time. It's time. It's time. Preacher, stop shacking up. Stop cheating on your wife. Oh, my God. It's my God, my God. Homosexuals, you can't stay the same way. It's time to come out. Come, come, out, come, out, come out, come out, come out. Glory to God. Come out. Either live single or get yourself a spouse of the opposite sex. Yes. The only marriage that God has ordained is the marriage between a husband and a wife. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And he doesn't tell us to have two and three wives. He says, have one. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says, you can't get drunk on Saturday night and do like I want you to do. Paul says, get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Hey, glory to God. Put the bottle down. Put the drugs down. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. Put the line down. Put the stealing down. Put the deceivement yes. down. Put the cheating down. Put it down. Right. Put the impurity down. Put it down. Put it to death. Put it down. That time Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mortify the deeds of the body. Glory to God. Glory Mortify them. Put them to death. And live a holy life according to the word of God. Oh, yes, Lord. God says, be holy. And Sister Tate quoted a minute ago. Be holy. Why? Because he's holy. Yes, and he makes the rules. I don't make the rules. God make the rules. And when my flesh yes. wants to get out and do what's wrong, the Holy Ghost convicts me. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He will keep you. He will. Hey, he Lord. will. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. He yes, will keep Lord. you. Yes. Yes. The Holy yes. Ghost yes. will yes. keep you. Hallelujah. Put the pornography down. Put it down. Put the pornography down. Put the sin down. Glory to God. Yes. 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 God is, I hear the Lord tonight. He said, I'm calling for the people to reconcile. But there needs to be a spirit of reconciliation. Too many people are not reconciling their relationships. But God wants us to reconcile and forgive as the Father yes. has reconciled and forgiven us. Hey, my, 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 my. The Lord is saying tonight, come out of sin. Yes. Yes. Hey, glory yes. to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And allow conviction to take place. Oh, yes. That we have fallen short. We all have fallen short. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Oh, Jesus. The Holy Ghost is here now. Have not. Hey, glory to God. The Holy Ghost will help us. Jesus says he'll help us. He oh, will yes, help Lord. us. Oh, yes. Oh, he yes. will help us. Yes, he will. You don't have to try to do it on your own. The Holy That's Ghost, right. don't deny that power. 
Don't deny the power to make you righteous. Don't deny that power that can make you holy. Don't deny that power that can make you come out of sin. Glory to God. Glory to God. And Jesus says, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Oh, well, yes, it is. Possible. It might seem oh, yes, impossible in your own strength. But when the Holy Ghost get in it, out of a whole shy, my God, my God, my God, my God, when the Holy Ghost get in it, hallelujah, for after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall have power. Hey, after the Holy Ghost, after you get the Holy Ghost, you got some power, baby. You got some power, brother. Hallelujah. Glory Glory to God. God. And I dare you to tell the devil, no, glory to God. You look at yes. him and say, no, yes. I put it down. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm Lord. Walk in my deliverance. I'm going to walk in my promise. Yana, robo, ora masia, ye kanando ho shana, ye danamando ho shabasi. Hey, the Lord is calling us out, hallelujah, because he has plans for us. I hear the Lord saying tonight that I've got plans for my people and I'm about to, hallelujah, move my people to another level. Yeah, that I'm a host. I'm about to take them to a level in me. And I got fans for my people and my sheep know my voice. Yeah, that I'm a host. And they obey my voice and they walk according to my voice. I hear the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Glory, to God. Glory, Glory to, God. to God. If you have been living in sin, I hear the Lord say, repent. Repent. Come on. Repent. Confess come on. Repent. Heal the humbling. Hallelujah. And the Glory Lord said, I'll forgive you. Glory to God. Glory God. He said, I'll forgive you. Glory to God. For he's yes, he will forgive you. Oh, he's he faithful and he's just Hallelujah. to forgive us of our sin. Yes, and he to is. cleanse us. He said, not only will I forgive you, but I'll clean you up. Yeah, glory to God. Yes, where you were yes, dirty, where you were muddy, where you were messed up in sin, I'll clean you up. Glory to God. Glory yeah, 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 yeah. God said, I'll clean you up. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'll bring you out. Hallelujah. He will do it. He oh, will. Hallelujah. He will. Glory to God. He'll bring he us. Will. Hey, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can never hold on my sea and a higher. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yet on my higher. Glory to God. Is there anybody online who wants a special prayer tonight? Hallelujah. The invitation is here. Can I see whether you say your name or you say it anonymously. We want to touch and agree with everybody tonight. Hallelujah. That God is going to take you to a new level in him. Yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Getting to live a life of righteousness as the power of the Lord empowers you to live that way. Hallelujah. The power of the Lord empowers you to live. Give a hand the day. Glory to God. The Holy Glory Ghost. God. Thank God tonight for the Holy Ghost. Hand up a whole yes, Lord, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have the Holy Ghost. Hey, my, 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 yes. my. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God for the Holy Ghost. Hand up a whole Shabbat. Don't grieve him. The scripture says that you can grieve him by your lifestyle. Hey, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, it is. Go Be it is. more careful the way that you live when you carry oh, yes, the Lord, temple of God on the inside. Hey, glory to God. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, Would there yes, be anyone oh, yes. that needed prayer tonight? Hey, glory to God. You're not too far into your sin that God can't deliver you. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a deliverer, God. 
higher. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I pray tonight that God will fix it for you. Yes, Jesus. Everybody on the line that has a sin problem that they're dealing with, I pray that God will bring deliverance. Hey, my God. That God will begin to bring deliverance. Glory to God. Bring deliverance to your people. Glory to God. So that righteousness will prevail in your life. Yes. Oh, Lord, yes. Tonight, we pray that we believe it in Jesus' name. That righteousness will prevail. That conviction will rise. And you will begin to be sorrowful about that sin. Honda, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Nothing can't happen until conviction first takes place. Conviction has to make you sorry. Hallelujah. Painful. Yeah. I hate it. I can't live in this no more. Which will lead you to repentance. And repentance to salvation. Saints of God, I thank God for you tonight. I love you tonight. I want you to know that God is ready to heal you. And as you go forward on this week, be on the lookout, be on the listen for what God has to say to you this week. Listen to what Boy. the Holy Spirit is going to be speaking in your spirit. And when it's spoken to you, all you got to do is go back to the word of God and you'll find yeah. it. You always know that Whatever is being spoken to you is going to be in the word. It's not in the word. You don't have to sit there and, 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 and entertain it. But when God speaks, he speaks according to his word. So as you're blessed on this week, we love you. And we believe God that you are being edified, corrected, reproved, uplifted, comforted, and encouraged. In Jesus' name. If you believe in Jesus, as the scriptures have said, then out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. God bless you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of blessing. Out of your belly.